Okay, you're in. Hello, my name is David Malpassini. I'm a senior architect from ACL, and I will show you now a quick review of what we are doing with the graphical modeling on the UWC. Okay. Can you put on the WebEx here? Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, fine. Okay. okay. So, the new desire. Uh, we want to create a new designer in a group that let you to drag and drop the components and to design and see what you are doing. This is our main objective for this kind of components. Uh, why we create an automation to save time, okay? And uh, the step currently to create a simple workflow inside the IWA is or with other tools are composed by nine steps. We want to reduce them to five. Okay. So it's, it's not only about time, but also to let uh, you understand better what you are doing and all the workflow is running and their dependency. Okay. This is the old, this is the new. As you can see, the aspect is totally different. And you see, Okay, so take a real world automation scenario. Alex, that is an application developer, wants to create a data processing workflow. Okay, so it will create a, a workspace to automate the data collection and processing and approval. Okay, so he wants also to manage the final report if there is some failure and notify someone if there is any issue and after he wants to deploy this new workflow inside the production okay and also allow it as a service as a self-service service okay so he has to create the data report to offer an approval failure and final report let's see the ui okay so this is only a mock-up of the new work home page, where is the designer, okay? And you can click on the designer and enter here. As you can see, there is uh, on the left, the palette with all the components block that you could use, okay? A canvas that is an empty space at the beginning. And this is the concept of the workspace, okay? Currently, we are working for a multiple workspace to let them also to be shared between different people. Okay, and you can drag and drop, set the name of the workspace and drag and drop a job. And this is an empty job. If you click on it, you can change the name. And in the asset, you have all the objects on the database that are already created and ready to be used. So you can. Okay. Create an event tool, for example. Okay. And the, you can put the data that you are usually do. So the name, the folder, the description with everything that's required. Okay. Select the events, the action, and so on, and save. This will be self directed in the database. So what you are doing from the asset palette are directly managed and under directed to the database. Okay. Instead, if you create a new job like the classroom, well, this is a mock-up, so you cannot see the drag. But if you get from Gassel to use it, REST APIs and drag it on the work on the workflow, okay, you will end up with this new box inside the workflow. And so on. You can change the name inside the panel that's on the right where you have the, all the properties. Okay. You can drag and drop another job. Okay, change the name. Click on asset. Reuse some of the definition that you already have. Drag and drop that done. And after you can put the dependency carefully without searching and without compiling anything. So using all the drag and drop, you can compose the job scene 
with the new job definition or already created job definition from the database and link the, all the dependency that you need. If you want to use some our station, you can put the station directly in drag and drop. So this job sim will use this default station and the same it can be done also for the job. Okay. Now I want to reuse another workflow, a job sim that I already created. So I can select it from the asset and drag and drop inside the canvas. And I have it here. And now I want to do a second approval verification job and next the job condition for data submission. So I can create the join and leave them, everything graphically. What do you think of this? Do you like uh, it's something that could be useful? No question. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. There you, you see also the condition dependency that are not in some line. Is what happens when you have two, three, four hundred jobs in a job stream instead of? Okay, the technology allows us to don't have any performance penalty. Okay, uh, he is not there, but there is a. a as more view on the right, okay, this is the gap, okay, where you can drag and move, okay. So if you have a lot of job stream with a lot of job, you have a um, navigation panel on the left, on the right, on the bottom, okay. So you can move between them. Uh, we are also thinking uh, to add a, another tab after the asset with the tree view of the workspace. So you can select from that review or link directly to the canvas. Not everything will be in the first release, obviously. This is only the, the book up. Okay. So also the the handle of all the workspace and shell of the workspace between different people is not there on the first in the first release. Okay. But the idea is to do this in a very few release for everything. Question just coming from the uh, meeting. How does the new interface deal with run cycles and start condition? Sorry? Uh, how does the new interface deal with run cycles oh, okay. and start conditions? Uh, the run cycle and the start condition is on the properties panel, so it will be inside the trigger section that I don't have here. Okay. That let you to select the run cycle. Uh, we will do a certain cycle preview inside directly here. So you can move from the time view, okay, of the scheduling to the dependency tree, okay, with a single click. So we have the design of it, but we still not have the, the IDFI, IDFI mockup. But the idea is to switch between uh, different view okay or aspects of the your work for your job stream okay without leaving the same interface um, another idea is also to add the, the scheduling language version okay of the workspace so you can edit it directly from the scheduling language or yaml format or json format what you prefer okay and see them reflected directly inside the graphical part. So they will be the complementary aspects of the same thing. And you can see it from the definition graphically, the actual format, okay? Or to check how the job scene is executed during the time. Also respect to all the job scene that will be opened inside the same workspace. Another thing that uh, it's not really clear is the deploy. All the changes that are done on, that you will do on uh, the job stream inside the whole Canvas area are not persistent in the database until you click deploy. Okay, the deploy is the action that will let you to the, 
put them in production. Okay. We are also um, thinking not from the MVP, okay, not for the first release, to have an uh, approval flow. So if you delegate someone else to create the workflow for you, but you want to be sure and that everything's is right before deploying it, you can put a, a authorization flow, okay, in the middle and authorize and check that everything is like what you want, okay, before to put it in production. So we want to separate also the duty between people. So this is our idea. If you have any comments, idea to improve, we are What's the feedback? The approval bits for the slot almost just relate to the Z issue. It's like putting it in the uh, until someone approves it. And yeah, it's a we interact with into the live database. Exactly. Before going to the database, it's an appending state because it's a workspace, okay? It's not saved in the database, okay? And until someone authorizes okay, the deploy, it doesn't exist. That would be the, the, the plan for the for the future completer. Okay, and could that all could that authorization come from the booking to say for example the service now? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 that, yeah, yeah. yeah. that one. Yeah. Yeah. Do that. yeah, could do that. So yeah, you're the default person or service now. Yeah. If that once that gets approved, then it will automatically approve that yeah. 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 deploy it, yeah. What would the a reject look like in that situation? So somebody so I know this is not Okay, so, so you get file for approval and you don't approve it. Yes, it will come back. It stays in draft uh, it stays, status. It stays ready for you to make your amendment so you can send it off again. Yeah. yeah. But, um, that is for the future complete. Yeah, that yeah. is not in this release, yeah, yeah. okay? Yeah, yeah, it will take some time, but it's important to hear from you for our directions. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. To collect your feedback, yeah. to design the future, I also we take in mind what are the, your idea or your needs. So I think so it's, a, we, it's a need we have quite a lot of We kind of want to empower developers to do their own work. We need to be able to wrap some security in. Exactly. And I'll let the to my general needs yeah. be addressed for us because we do the majority of our work in the to production. It's a problem yeah. for you. Yeah. Exactly. So, and you cannot do any changes until you put it in the database. So this kind of stuff will split and allow you to delegate the creation to someone else that uh, let you to exactly take the, the main step to put in production yeah, okay. and do all the checks. Well, you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, uh, the first version that will not future complete, so the the power flow is not there for sure, okay? Because that's something that I already know, okay? Is in 10.2.3, okay? So probably the power flow will be in one on the next. I think that will be one of the algorithm stuff that we have to do. The power flow. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's in our roadmap, certainly. So, so the first version would be 10.2.3. For the graphical modeling. Yes. 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 And it will work only for distributed. Only for distributed. Because we need to do the APIs for the Z side. For the Z. And uh, it will not cover everything. Okay. If you see the resource in the mockup missing the versioning, there are several preview. For the several preview, we have an internal mockup. Okay. But it's still an early stage. So I don't know. I'm not sure that would be completed by the, the deadline of the release, okay? So the first version is in October. It's in October, okay? It will let you to create everything, okay? And deploy without a single concern. We have to do the, for sure, missing the version, the recycle preview, the approval flow, okay? And something more okay so you're going to be busy no no, no holiday for you this time <laughs> for the next for the next, next five years. years yes <laughs> yeah. because our roadmap is a little bit packed right now
<laughs> okay. Sorry, you may have said version control Is there already the version no. controller? Every change that you do to your scheduling object, okay, is audited and you can compare the version. So my are some of them can one that all, all the objects now have. Okay. It's still there, the changes on the database, okay, but there is no UI to, to, to see them from there. Okay. Right now. Right now. You mentioned the JSON and the YAML profile. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That is the second, the, the last, the, the next step of the method test. Ten one. You have all versions. You can see it. Good one. Right now we see. But you would ask you can change the YAML. Yo, oh, right, right. And it's a much show that. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you already know about Rockly. Okay. Uh, currently, on the, the 10.2, it's used only for the plan part. So it's a replacement for Conman. Uh, from the 10.2, okay, uh, is there also for the model part. So you could use to manage. The object definition on the database. Uh, currently, it supports only few objects, so work session, job stream, and job definition. Okay, but we are expanding to cover also the other the other objects. Okay, um, as you can see, Oakley can be installed everywhere. It's already installed with the master with the agents, but you can download and install on your laptop. Without an issue, we support all the platform of the agents plus Mac OS. So, so from a Mac, you can install and manage your AIWA system remotely. Okay. Um, so, another thing that uh, Oakley supports is the context switching. So, you can have with a single installation of Oakley. Uh, multiple configuration pointing at different services. So you can have dev1, dev2, PA, production, production2, configured yeah. on the single command line, a switch between them only with a single command. So if you see Oakley context new with the context name, allow you to create a new context, and you can list and remove context, and set the current context, or change a parameter. So if you move one master, uh, an IP of master from one IP to another one, you can use Oakley context set, the context name where you configure that master with the param and the new name. Okay. And if you want to switch, you can switch between them. Okay. So it's, I don't know if you know the kubectl, okay, to manage the Kubernetes cluster. It's quite the same. So you can have multiple installation and con configure multiple installation from the single command line as which between between them. Okay. Uh, this is how it's configured. This is a configuration, an example of the configuration file. Okay. You can also edit it and modify it as you want. The only difference to use the Oakley is that you need an API key that you can create and generate from the UI, okay, from the WC. And you will use your personal credential, okay? So your security to manage everything from the remote server, okay? Uh, the new part is the Oakley model that was new, 10.2.2, okay? And we plan is, okay, you can monitor jobs, submit, perform actions, monitor the status of workstation, perform action workstation. And so on. Here is all the command that we support, but unless some something on resources found, okay, that are not still there, okay, everything is supported on the plan. But now we have also the model part, okay, that is not the the wow factor of Zogli, okay. 
because this is the first that enables us to use Oakley to also manage the object on the, on the database. Okay, so you have also the same command of Composer. So you can switch from Composer to Oakley with only changing Composer with Oakley space model and command with Oakley space plan. And the syntax of the command is the same, okay? okay. But on lines, you can also create an alias if you want. Yeah. And that's it. Thank you, Marco, could you read the, the question? Okay. Uh, how does the new interface deal with run site start no, already done that? No? No? I think somebody just put their hand up. Hi, yeah, hi, uh, this is Shaitanya here. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, hi. So um, my question is like, um, in case if we want to avoid uh, something like a DDoS attack, like for example, um, if someone, some user files a command continuously, like uh, get to check the job status, right? From the orchestration CLI. Is there a way that we could actually restrict that only three commands per minute or something like that? So, I mean, the, the main reason I'm asking this question is there are scenarios wherein the master goes down if the number of requests are high. Okay. Mm. Currently, the, there isn't that. Okay, it's a good idea. Okay, also to allow some request limit by user. Okay, it's something that is achievable, but currently it's not there. Okay, in any case, uh, you can point directly to the backup. Yeah, okay. actually, even if we point it to the backup, right? I mean, uh, the, the number of connections should be restricted, isn't it, to the master or the backup master, or else we will be in trouble at some point of time if the number of requests are high. It, it goes only to the database, so it's not so high, the throughput and the usage is okay, but uh, the, you are right, uh, we could have a limit for user of uh, request rate to slow down frequently requests. Okay, I will point it and uh, ask it for an RFE. You could also fill an RFE for that. But this is right. a good idea. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Okay. This is an example. As you can see, the output is the same as the currently that you are used to. Okay. So. This is public plan SC that is equals common C, the same format, the same data. So we are not even breaking the old format of the output. Okay. So on 10.2.3, you can create, list, modify, unlock, lead for job, job single session and folder. Sorry, I forgot the folders last time. Okay. And uh, do everything that you're used to okay what's new okay we allow from a single file okay to resolve the dependence inside the file okay so you can put also in apple sequence your the job that reference a job stream that is defined after the first one okay and we will resolve everything and save it in a consistently way on the database. What's more, we allow to have in a single file multiple objects. objects. That's something that with Composer is not possible, for example. So in a single file, you could have your variable table, your folder, your job, your job definition, uh, your calendar, your run cycle group, everything that you want, okay, in a single file and deploy it 
in, with a single command. So you can do a replace of this file and you will uh, up, get, update everything on, that is on the tab file. So with a single source of truth, you can update everything. That could be very useful for CI CDI pipeline. So if you want to put your definition on GitHub or something like that mm. and deploy them after an approval, you can do that running a single Oakley command that is, uh, you can build that container um, running a GitHub pipeline if you want without any problem, okay? So you can set up any DevOps cycle also with our definition right now. It's not so easy to extract them in that format currently. It's missing. We need also some command to extract, for example, all the definition, all the objects that are under a folder. That is our idea. Okay. So having a single file, a way to export and import or everything that you need for that automation. That will, I think that it will simplify a lot the move from dev QA environment to production, also using command line or DevOps cycle. Okay. This is an example how we can manage and you both can do with Docker. So you can also do SQL reference and we will save them without an issue in a single command. Okay. Another uh, things that uh, we add in 10.2.2 is uh, the format. You can select the format of the definition that you want in output and in input. You can use them as you want. In input, you don't have to specify anything because we can find the correct format directly. Okay. In output, there is a default that is scheduling. Okay. You can override it from Oakley inside the configuration file if you want to change for your box all the output format or in a single command with the option. So you can have JSON, YAML format also. That will let you to improve readability. Also on GitHub you can, it's easier to have diff for the JSON the YAML format instead of the scheduling. Okay. Um, this is, as you know, a possession, okay, in Scadlang. This is in, yeah, in JSON. It's quite more readable, but uh, my preferred way is the YAML. That is much more readable. Okay. So, why this format? Because with this new format, you can do something that before it's very complex. For example, I said I told you, you can extract JSON format, replace some values of JSON that is easier with JQ or other tools like also JSONATA. There are plugins that allow us to manipulate inside the product the JSON and change one JSON in, that is in the ingress, the output. Okay. You can change also the format, okay, and after it, publicate, okay, publish inside the product environment, the changed version. So you can replace folder, postation, name, variables, everything you want in the JSON. Because there are a lot of tools that allow you to do that. Instead, with the scheduling, you have to, you said, be sure that the definition is the correct format, pay attention to the space, and so on. Okay, you can do also massive update because if you extract all your definition with the rule and want to update them with a substitute and replace, it's easy. You can substitute, replace, and apply. Okay, now a pain point of an SSL. I know that. Before you can change. Yeah, that's an answer. Question. Um, how does that work with workload application templates? Mm, it's still there. It's still there, the, the web application. But, it, but instead of doing it on a job by job basis, because <clears throat> workload application templates work on 
with job streams and then all associated scheduling objects, could you use that with this? So then we have to as part of the promotion do process. rethink at least how the bot are currently implemented. Okay, that's sure. Okay, mm. the, the old format is still supported, obviously. Okay, and we will not drop it for a long time. Mm -hmm. Okay, but uh, it's difficult to manage that format because it's an XML. Okay, and also the substitution with the folder not so easy to handle. The real practice, uh, it's quite difficult to achieve something particular, in some cases, at least. So that is more user friendly. But for sure, we want also to, in the future, the what man, okay, click. To work with. So at, at the end of the day, we want only one click to manage all the product. Yes. So it, it, we will do that step by step, obviously. But uh, at the end, with Oakley, you can manage all your environment from a single point. So you don't have to remember 10 different command line with 10 different formats, 10 different authorizations, and so on. And Oakley is a single binary. So you could really put in a container, configure it, you know, fine, so 30 mega container, and run in a GitHub, GitLab pipeline, as a containerized version of the combo line, and also do your DevOps cycle with your application template, okay, from your source code to the repository. Is uh, the OCLI replacing Kotlin and Composer in the end? In, at the end, Oakley will have the same functionalities for okay. Kotlin and Composer. Okay, and does the OCLI work against the security file? Also against the security file on the okay. database. Okay, yes. it's just that we have centralized security. So you should be up to enable the security on the database. Okay. okay. You generate JWT too. The user. Yeah. And so no okay. one else you don't have to set up different security there for the user because it will use the security that you do from SCL uh, security roles and so on. Okay, and it will apply that security on the database directly. So it's the same security that you have also on the REST APIs. Something that I did, didn't say, okay. All the Oakley, okay, part uh, is using the, the backend part of the V2 APIs that are exposed by the product, that are then a new set of APIs that are much more easier to use, okay. Uh, the structure of the, of the job, the job stream plan and so, is quite similar, okay, at the previous one with small changes, okay. Uh, sometimes we do like a breaking fix, okay, but they are documented on that. But uh, they allow you to query each object by its name and path. So if you see the job stream or an object, the JSON part, you can filter with the, the OQL language everything that you want in that object. So, and all CLI is using the same interface. So we will convert the selectors and filters on uh, CLI that you are using on uh, COM and uh, so on in the OQL query that will go back to the REST APIs. The only thing is that uh, we are skipping the REST part from the architecture point of view, okay, to uh, avoid uh, um, a lot of round trip between master and client, okay? So we will send a single payload that will do all the work, calling the backend of the REST APIs and answer back.
Okay, Peter's asked a question on WebEx, which is uh, could OCLI use an input file as a filter for export? An input file for? As a filter for the export. Export. For export. OCLI. I don't... So only yeah. export the <laughs> Sorry. Um, not only export the entire folder. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Always a question or something like this. Um, so we have we don't use folders. We okay. use so application prefixes. Okay. But we don't want every time to export the entire prefix because the prefix can contain like a thousand streams. Mm -hmm. So if you move one certain project to a higher environment, we would want to only export the streams that were changed so like uh, like say five or ten streams or something with like 20 jobs in them. so it would be useful to, to be able to like have an, a file that it can use where you could list all the streams that need to be exported okay so you want more power in this in the filter part of the extra part like also the a date for the changes to extract them starting from a date. So you don't want to extract all these. Yeah, yeah, but if there are multiple teams working on multiple parts, then they would only want to export their project. So if, if they, would if also they can see the only that, if they can see only that by security filter, they are ready to do only that. Okay. Yes, 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 but, yes, but the, the, the customer I'm talking about has like 10, 000, more than 10,000 streams. Okay. So there's like 100 developers working on those streams. And yeah. they sometimes it's like five or six or whatever, even more developers working on the same application prefix with more than 1,000 streams in them. So some are working on like five streams of a certain project. Others are working on like 10 streams of another project, but they're all in the same prefix. And yeah, one team wants to move their um, their project forward. The other one is still developing. So they will need to set a certain yeah filter. So we use a different tool now to move these um, streams to the higher environment. But if OCLI could be used or could use like, like a file for an input where you could list the streams that need to be added or need to be exported. Okay, so you want to be very useful. A list of uh, objects to be extracted. Okay, indeed, with all their That's dependencies. Then, indeed, yeah. Yeah, but uh, that makes sense. We don't see any issue. So it's a requirement. We don't do it right now, but but we can implement it. It's possible to implement it. Yeah. Also, the Excel part should be for sure enhanced. Okay, so all the requirements are useful. That's a good one. So, thank you. Okay, I will try to move fast. Okay, on the security announcement. So, open SSL. Okay, on on the two, the two, uh, we leverage the open SSL three libraries. What means that? That uh, if you have them installed already on the, your machine, we will use directly that one. That will allow you to upgrade them for security, vulnerabilities, and so on, without upgrading the product. Okay, that is the benefit. If they are not there, like on uh, old Red Hat, because uh, for example, Red Hat support OpenSSL libraries from the nine version upwards. Okay, but if you are still using, for example, Red Hat 8 or Windows platform, we will bring our, okay? Uh, so, what changed with OpenSSL? The main things that uh, we Unified the all data store and key store that is used on the master in two. Okay, so we have the trust key store and the private key store that is used for liberty, FTA, and dynamic agent in the same place. Okay, FTA and dynamic agent in the same place, liberty another one. But they are the same file. 
okay uh, we dropped the old default certificate that was in common for all the installation and that's not good because it's quite having the eating clear text okay so currently the installation if you don't provide your certificate will create automatically okay a set of certificate for your installation what that means that the if you install a master on a fresh install it's not a problem you will end with a working master in the file means okay <laughs> if you are trying to do an upgrade and you are not doing a diet it's a problem because you have to provide the certificate of the old environment otherwise the new environment and the old environment will not talk okay this is the bad okay another things is that uh, you have to move the folder that's generated documented okay from the master to the DWC installation the agent installation or the backup installation because you have to use the same set of certificates you yeah, have a question for everyone how many of you are using uh, your company certificates for the master and the DWC for all the components so for the conference, you store your certificate, so the procedure for you doesn't change because uh, you are providing the certificate for each component that are signed by your company CA. Perfect. The other one or the default? Okay. Well, this is the problem we have when we try to install the DSA. You are in a loop with the certificates, so there is something yeah. wrong, okay. But the, usually, you need to provide your custom your certificate. Also, because in all companies, the the CA of the company is already stored in all the boxes. So it's like having a, a real certificate for your device. Okay, but if you don't have it, don't mind. Okay, now the certificate are for installation, so they are real secure. They are generated, okay, 4K lane length. We, the, this one was 1K and could not be used for TLS 1.3. That was another reason to drop them, okay? Because uh, currently, the list, the minimum version of TLS that is considered secure is 1.2. But probably in a matter of one year, probably it could be declared insecure so everybody should move to 1.3 in a matter of some years okay and with your certificate it's not possible because the TLS 1.3 doesn't allow key below 2k okay so if you want to move to TLS 1.3 we have to change all the keys on all the installation that's a must and that's a security problem, so it's not depending by us. During the installation, you can select the password of the key store. It's not more default, okay? So there is a parameter that <clears throat> can do. It's mandatory during the installation. That is the SSL password that you have to provide. And this is the password that is used to seal all the key store, okay? And you have to remember it because during the upgrade, if we need to add certificates or anything during the upgrade, we need that password. Okay. The new certificate that we generate will expire in 1990 years, if I remember correctly, something like that. Okay. Uh, the DWC and the agent can only be stored uh, using an SSL folder, so you have to provide the certificates, okay? That's not really true. For the agent, there are two other ways to, to store without certificates. Uh, you can use the user password parameters, 
and configure the depot on the master that usually is already configured to download directly from the master the certificate for the agent. Okay. Um, then we use a template password is a username and password that could be any username and password. The only things that the user should have is the rights to download the certificate. So in the security file, should have the file permission on a specific file. Okay. Or using the NAPI key, link to a user with the same privileges. Okay. In that way, the agent will install the certificates and start. What's more, if you are leveraging the depot folder inside the master to provide the certificate to the agents, okay, the agents can download them before the expiration automatically. So the agent will, if the master sees that the certificates of the agent are expiring, it will force the agent to download the, the new certificate from the depot folder. This is done by 15 days before the expiration. So you can upgrade all the certificate in the network, okay, leveraging the depot folder. This is only for the dynamic agent, obviously. The FTA usually are installed in clear text, unless the master and the backup from the 10 release on a fresh installation, they are stored in SSL. Someone else use uh, FTAs in SSL? This is a manual procedure to install them. So you could use the same, okay? Okay. IWA use a mutual authentication TLS, okay, to authenticate the agent to the master, okay. So all the for dynamic agent, okay, and all the names should be specified in a, a file. So usually you will generate only a certificate that is valid for as a client certificate for all the agents. So you don't need to have a specific certificate for each agent. That's something that we want to change, okay? But currently, the situation is that. If you want, you can do that. You can also do regular expression in that file, if I remember correctly. So you can start, but you have to provide a naming convention for the name of the agent, okay? Otherwise, you could also leverage another selection mechanism, okay, that will uh, not use anymore the ATLS mutual authentication, okay, but use a JWT token that is uh, issued during the installation of the agent. In that way, you can also put a balancer between the master, if you want, and the agent with a gateway, okay, and do TLS elimination on the border, but that's a more specific um, selection. Uh, it depends more on your network and how you want to authenticate and what you want to do and how you want to manage the TLS. For example, in Kubernetes environment, we allow only dynamic agents, okay, with gateway because uh, you cannot start the communication from the Kubernetes cluster to the agent, usually, okay? And uh, we, until the 10.2.1, we need that the, the ingress controller could do an SSL pass-through, because uh, otherwise the agent could not communicate correctly with the master, okay? We drop this limitation using the JWT token, okay? So you can do the TLS termination on the ingress and continue in TLS or in clear text, I hope not. But you can do all the TLS management with public certificate, for example, on the border, on the ingress, and after manage with different certificate for the master and DWC. Okay. 
and that's all. We are out of time. <laughs> Question? No. <laughs> Are you done? Yeah. Okay. You stop sharing all that. Okay.